Did you hear about the man who could transmit electricity without wires back in the 1960s? And it wasn't Nikola Tesla. It's a Soviet scientist whose work is still classified. His name has been erased from history, and his technology could change the world. He wasn't a celebrity, he wasn't in the newspapers, but his ideas were decades ahead of their time. This man is a Soviet engineer whose name is now almost impossible to find in official sources. Perhaps because he came too early to what the rest of the world is only now getting close to. In 1962, this engineer applied for an invention that could change the course of history. He came up with a device that transmitted power through the air, without wires. Something like modern wireless charging, but with the ability to power entire homes, workshops, and even objects at a distance. For comparison, in the United States, the first experiments on wireless energy began only in the 70s, and that at the level of laboratories. The Soviet engineer was at least 10 years ahead of them, maybe more. He wasn't a star scientist. He didn't speak at congresses or receive orders. He lived, according to stories, in an ordinary flat, went to work at the institute and did not stand out. But his developments were discussed on the sidelines of scientific institutes, in whispers. Colleagues said he was playing with something that could get out of control. And then a strange thing happened. After 1970, his name completely disappeared from scientific journals, papers, and even internal documents. It was as if he had never existed. Mentions of his patents were removed, publications could not be found, and photographs were said to have been removed from archives. Some are convinced he came too soon to an energy source that could change not only the economy, but also the military balance. And that's already dangerous. If people got free energy without wires, it would hit the oil and energy monopoly. It was not favorable to the authorities. Perhaps his ideas were stolen and refined in the West. The first analogs appeared just after his name disappeared. Soviet Tesla conducted experiments, after which even the most courageous engineers refused to approach his installations. One day, on a very ordinary working day, the entire neighborhood lost electricity for 30 minutes. In the laboratory at that moment, a device was being tested that was supposed to transmit current without wires. There was no fire or short circuit, but everything was blacked out. Lights, equipment, even the alarm system. Within a radius of several kilometers. When the electricians came to look for the cause, they found nothing. The grid was fine. It was just as if something had sucked all the energy out of the system. After this incident, the engineer was treated with caution. But he didn't stop. On the contrary, he said he was close to a real breakthrough. A couple of weeks later, another incident occurred. During another test, several employees refused to enter the lab. They said that there was something strange inside. One technician stated that there was a feeling of pressure in the air, like before a thunderstorm, even though the weather was clear. Another that the lamp on the table lit up without being switched on. And it wasn't magic. It was unexplained physics that few understood. An atmosphere of fear and silence began to cover the Institute. Officially, nothing was happening. But in the smoking rooms, employees whispered, he accidentally launched something that should not have launched. According to rumors, a few days after the incident, people without uniforms and with blank IDs came to the lab and had a long talk with the engineer behind a closed door. These experiments could have been not only scientific, but also military in nature. And no one was supposed to know about it. After those strange and frightening experiments, it became clear that this man was doing something that went beyond ordinary science. Colleagues shunned him, the management stopped letting students into the laboratory, and talking about his work was banned altogether. It was then, as eyewitnesses say, that he suddenly disappeared from the familiar institute. No transfer order, no wires, no explanations. Just one day, his office appeared empty and his workplace neatly cleaned. 
After the disappearance of the engineer from the horizon, many thought that he went abroad, died, or went mad. But the truth turned out to be far more interesting and terrifying. He was transferred to a secret laboratory that didn't officially exist. This laboratory was somewhere deep in the Soviet countryside, in an area where no trains ran, and the nearest village was dozens of kilometers away. It was guarded by armed men, barbed wire, and no signs. Only a special pass and only when summoned from above. All employees signed an obligation to keep state secrets for life. No time limit. No right to tell even their relatives. If you violated it, you'd go to jail or worse. What were they developing? Not just technology, but new energy sources. Wireless, unstable, potentially dangerous, possibly world-changing. But at the time, the USSR was already starting to fear. Discoveries too powerful could easily turn into weapons. And instead of progress, it could lead to disaster. Some claimed that inside the lab, materials were used that were not freely available to anyone else. For example, rare earth metals, experimental coils and circuits that resembled radio antennas. Only not for communication, but for transmitting current over a distance. Perhaps the lab was not just scientific, but a testing ground for future technologies that proved too dangerous. Inside this laboratory, hidden from the world, the engineer continued to work, but no longer under the supervision of his colleagues, but under the control of those who understood how serious his inventions could be. It wasn't a place to conduct ordinary experiments. They were creating something that could potentially change the course of history or destroy everything around it. He was no longer writing papers, making reports, sharing ideas. Everything he worked on went straight into closed archives, but fragmentary descriptions have survived. From them, we can understand the main thing. The engineer had one goal. He wanted to build a device capable of transmitting energy at a distance, without wires, without substations, without power lines. Judging by the surviving schemes, it was a matter of creating a stable electromagnetic field through which energy could be channeled. Like radio, but instead of a signal, it was an electric current. According to calculations, such a transmission could power an entire house up to two kilometers away. No wires, just through the air. One of the diagrams found later shows how it could work. There's a transmitter antenna on the roof. On the ground, a receiver that looks like a satellite dish. Nothing in between. No cable, no mains. And yet the power was flowing, the lights were on, the instruments were working. In one of his rough notes, the engineer claimed that with certain settings, his device could intercept external electromagnetic fields, even those not associated with Earth sources. After one test, the device detected anomalous field fluctuations that coincided with radio interference in another region of the country. He may have discovered a way to use the environment as a carrier of energy rather than just space. His device could have been not just a charger, but a universal energy transfer system that could be scaled from a flat to a city. When it became clear that the device really worked, interest in it increased dramatically. But it was no longer a scientific interest, but the interest of special services and the military. Experiments showed that energy is transmitted at a distance, devices light up without wires, and equipment begins to behave strangely. This means that it can not only be used, it can be turned into a weapon. Three months after one of the successful tests, the project was shut down, silently. No explanation. The lab was sealed off, all the circuits and equipment taken to an unknown location. Employees were forbidden to discuss the subject, even amongst themselves. The engineer was rumored to have been transferred to another institution, where he was no longer involved in open development. His name has not been officially mentioned anywhere since then. Why stop progress so abruptly? Because the technology had become too dangerous to the system itself. The Soviet Union was based on centralized power. Everything ran through state networks under complete control. 
And now someone is creating a device that can power homes directly, without the state, without permits, without control. This is undermining the foundations. In addition, too many things started to happen outside the rules. Appliances were catching fire on their own, equipment was failing, and no one could fully explain it. This did not fit into the logic of science, and even more so, it did not fit into the logic of the Soviet government. The archive with the reports on the experiments was classified under the Special Importance label and has not been opened to this day, despite the decades that have passed. But what happened to the engineer himself after the project was closed? After the project closed, the engineer literally disappeared. Not with a fuss, not with searches, not with arrests. He just disappeared. Colleagues didn't know where he was. Neighbors said his flat was vacated at night without explanation. And the family received one short letter. Changed his place of work. No city, no date, not even a new position. No signature, no stamp, just dry text. Officially, he was not fired, not dead, not wanted. He simply disappeared as a person who no longer existed. The institute where he worked most of his life dealt with him harshly. His name was removed from the Wall of Honor, where photos of honored engineers used to hang. His scientific works were no longer mentioned in collections. Even in group photos from the archive, according to one of the employees, his face was neatly covered with white stickers. It was as if this was not just a purge, but an attempt to erase him from history. Some are sure that he was transferred to a secret laboratory where he continued to work under a different name. There is a version that he ended up under military surveillance and was never released again. According to another version, he himself went into the shadows, realizing that his invention could be more dangerous than it seemed. For a long time, it seemed that from the mysterious engineer did not remain a single paper. Everything had been removed, destroyed, or hidden. But almost thirty years later, when the building of the old institute started to be dismantled, a metal cupboard was found in the basement which nobody had opened since the seventies. It was locked with an old rusty lock, and inside lay something that completely changed the perception of that history. In the cabinet were drawings, schematics, and two diaries, one technical, the other personal. All the pages were neatly stitched, all handwritten, without corrections. In the technical diary, schemes of power transmission, calculations, parameters, frequencies, even examples of specific tests. One of the schemes amazed everyone. It almost exactly resembled modern wireless chargers, only it was designed for a power sufficient to power a whole house, and this was in the mid-sixties. When you look at all these facts, the secret laboratory, the transmission of energy through the air, the blueprints that look like modern technology, you can't help but wonder whether the USSR missed its chance to become a world leader in energy. The technology this engineer was developing could have completely changed the approach to electricity supply. No wires, no substations, no networks that break down in every wind. Imagine, the power goes directly, like Wi-Fi, only instead of the internet you get light, heat and power for all your appliances. It would be a revolutionary breakthrough not only for science, but also for the country's economy. One of the closed patents, dating back to 1962, pretty much replicates the principles now used in smartphone charging, smart cars, and even drones. Experts who have studied the surviving materials say that if the project had not been classified, the USSR could have entered the wireless energy market in the 70s and occupied a niche that the world reached only in the 2000s and 10s. It would have been not just a technological leap, it would have been a political and strategic advantage. What do you think about it? Write in the comments.